Right. Next up. It's one of our favorites. It, I think it's Jack's favorite of the whole year. Oh, I love the sandwich. Yeah. It's the Peter Willington Memorial. It's like a ham sandwich or keen award for okayest game. Okay. So previous winners 2016, Gears of War 4. 2017, Middle Earth Shadow of War, doing the double that year for most disappointing and ham sandwich. 2018, Far Cry 5. 2019, a tie between Gears 5 and Days Gone. Yes, the poll was even split on the two of them that yeah, year. Yeah, it was. Um, 2020. Days Gone director, absolutely human. Yeah. 2020, Coffee Talk. Uh, 2021, Destruction All Stars. Um, our nominees for this year are Stray, Strange Horticulture, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, Ghostwire Tokyo, Windjammers 2, Power Wash Simulator, Evil West, Tunic. Pokemon Legends Arceus and starting off this time it's a me Um, and I'm going to do a what I feel is a great service to my good friend Jack Lazell and I'm taking God of War off this because I think it's in no man's land it's better than Ham Sandwich it's not game of the year it's way better than Ham Sandwich Um, so I, I, I am getting rid of that Thank you. It John. might have we... valleys, but it also thoroughly has peaks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, yeah, I think we. The good parts are too good for it to sit in ham sandwich. Precisely me. what my argument. I've, would be. I've buried the game enough, so I'm just. Yeah. It, profoundly up. a seven out of ten, <laughs> but I'll leave it at that. Um, Garrett, you're next. You know what? I'm gonna run against type. I'm gonna take out stray. I have uh, thoroughly uh, insisted uh, it, it, it being is... such a nice little oh, game. Oh, gee, gee. Is, which, which is just like, it's a narrow step above Ham Sandwich, nice little game. But yeah. I, I, I've got, You're I don't probably down too right. much on You're it being a nice right. little game that, that if, it, if it, our it is ceiling, like a seven. If our ceiling for Ham Sandwich is like 7.5, this is a 7.6. And it yeah, just, or a seven point five five. You're probably right. There's something. There's something about this that did look just right to me in this category. But you're probably right. It is. Let's not put the boots to it too much. It is a nice mm. little game, you know. And to your points as well, it's an indie that yeah. doesn't quite well, we, get we, there. We, but... we do. We hold it to unfair standards and yeah. to a degree. I do think because of how it, it, almost... it, it looks too good for its own good. It's mm. like a double A rather than a triple A. Almost mm. is how yeah. it looks, but or like it, a lowercase know... triple A. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or like um, a two A's and an umlaut. <laughs> Barry, my good man. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll cut Mark some slack here, and I'll say Tunic should probably go. You either think Tunic is the game of the year, or you fucking hated it. To me, that yeah. makes it not a ham sandwich game. Yeah, um, I think it's a bad game, not a ham sandwich game. Uh, I agree. Yeah, I, I am happy for you to think that. I have absolutely if, no issue with that. If this was the Marmite game of the year, it, Tunic, it could, yeah. like it I really know. is. Like I don't know how how up to date. Uh, you guys are on your Gersman podcast. He fucking loves that game. Yeah, oh he my loved god! It at the time, he loved all it he time. does is talk about how much he loves that game. Now it's crazy. <laughs> he, uh, he, like, he, okay, like, I most of the time I am in agreement with the man on a lot of things he likes and doesn't like, but occasionally he's just out on an island with something for me, and like his rabid love of Tunic is. I, I just well, don't well, see it. Mark, Mark can get him on his Splinter podcast. That's one up for Mark. You know? ah, that works for me. I'm pretty um, sure he let Neil might as well. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Jack. I'm gonna push Pokemon Arceus off because mm. before anyone before anyone jumps in, like even if you might not like the game that much, they actually went out of their way to do something different with the Pokemon like genre. Like they created a single player action adventure game and a lot of the mechanics and things feel like massive improvements that they've needed to do for a long time to just make something fresh make something interesting like the sort of weird evil versions of the pokemon that were giant with the red eyes and stuff um were really Where pokemon felt cool. menacing like they were menacing yeah. like used to evil looking gengar like for fuck's sake, Dave! Like, there's a Gengar in this game that dwarfs uh, you, you. You have piqued my interest, sir. <laughs> yeah, like the evil. If the Gengar, Gengar just... gang is going to represent them, oh, here. it's so cool in this game because he's like, yeah, and the fact that these Pokemon going... just show up and they want to fuck you up, they actually want to yeah. hurt you. <laughs> I got body slammed by a Snorlax an hour into playing this game, and that is cool. Now, was this game uh, a massive success? 
no <laughs> there are things about it that didn't quite get there Pat, like mainly the frame rate and the look and obviously that's much more pronounced than scarlet and violet but scarlet and violet was probably more fun to play than this so they kind of balance each other out but this isn't a ham sandwich of a game it feels like a tech demo for something that could be more if they continue to go down this route and do interesting things i it, i almost kind of missed the ease at which you can catch Pokemon in this game when I started playing Scarlet and Violet. Like the jet ball, where you can hit a Pokemon from like a hundred yards away with mind bullets and catch it. That is fucking cool. Um, yeah, yeah so I was going to say, I think my, my biggest case for me liking this game a lot is that, as you just said, there's a, a bunch of features in this game that aren't in Scarlet and Violet. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, I wish it was in, right? Yeah. Would you say that was most disappointing to you? <laughs> I mean, I, I will say, I will say, I think congratulating uh, Game Freak on finally changing up the formula some at minimum 10 years after people asking for it is a low hanging fruit to, to congratulate them on. I do they've think they've been doing it since Sun and Moon, though. It's not they, like this is the first game they've tweaked. Like they have Sun and Moon was no, a tweak away from the gym structure. Tweaks, but and, we're talking about and, a complete reinvention of the formula. This was this was as as an outside viewer, this was Arceus was the one where I all the Pokemon friends uh, that I have were like super excited about it, you know, uh, quirks and all that it did have. And it certainly didn't didn't come out super polished. But the the, the conversation around this seemed like relatively excited. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and it seemed like it seemed like people were willing to take the warts and all for just how refreshingly ambitious it the, was. The, the main um, issue with this, and it's the same with um, the, the, the two games that prominent this year for they, they just cannot stick the landing. Like because you can you, murder your Pokemon in your cult. There is that as well. No, because you play through like the first three or four hours of, of Legends, and it's like you know what? this is great. This is a this is a refreshing new take on Pokemon. There's this kind of freedom to explore. You get body checked by Snorlax. It's great. It's fantastic. But by the time you get to around about like the third uh, location, you kind of realize like this game doesn't really feel like it has that much more to show other than the, the, the big other than the boss battles that's the, the one and the thing movement that... shout out to the movement still best open world movement in the yeah, game yeah, yeah. the yeah. final the final actual pokemon battle in this game is oh, the it's so hardest hard. yeah yeah, so yeah. Hard. it's the hardest pokemon battle ever and it almost made you feel like I can't believe how easy some of the other pokemon battles in the games are like the real big battles that you kind of you know, like, oh, this feels like a cl climactic moment. And, you know, you've got one Pokemon that you just spam the same move on and win the whole battle. You could not get away with that. Like, it was a genuinely epic finale. Um, and then just when you think it's over, you've got to fight Giratina. And you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, like, I've got, like, three members of my party left. Mm -hmm. And just when you uh, think you've beaten Giratina, you've got to fight the fucking origin I, version after the altered form. Uh, and that is a really cool finale. So, yeah, there's too the, much I like about this game for it to be considered. Wait, it's a good game. Yeah. It's not a, I was going to say, yeah, for, for the sake of brevity as well, it's like, I think it's pretty clear it's it's coming off this list. So we'll we'll uh, we'll, we'll move forward, friends. Um, Mark. Uh, Windjammers Two does not yeah. belong on this list. Mm. Like, it, like from because this thing. Um, if you look at this game from it, it doesn't have this feature, it doesn't have that feature, it doesn't have a particularly good like single player campaign. Blah 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 blah. Fine, Barry but this is the, nodding furiously. But this is the thing, right? This is the game that made me finally realize what the Street Fighter people are saying, and that is like, if you just give me that core gameplay experience, yeah. I don't give a shit if you don't have yeah, yeah. those whistles. And Windjammers Two, when you're just sitting down and you're just playing Windjammers Two, it's the best fucking game of the year for me. Right? Yeah, it's but that so, if you apply that sentence so to Windjammers One, I, 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 I feel like the differences between that the first one and 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 this one are extremely negligible. For a, like, I, you know, I mean, I know a lot of us here have followed the saga of the Windjammers revival and then the re-release and now obviously <laughs> Sp people... speaking of Jeff Gersman I mean Jeff Gersman I mean, and, and following his projects but but like the key thing I, with Windjammers you know... 2 though is it fixes online play for a start because the, like, eh, the remastering they did fixing a busted thing in the previous game doesn't sway me at all I, 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 I think it's a very very basic here's another one of these I, I, I was I I'm I I would be I'm surprised if this, I'm I'm not neon white surprised but I would be surprised if this comes off I I look it is I mean the, the core gameplay is really good I I I, I put a couple I think of hours the into it is There's... too good and it overlooks anything. yeah and, 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 there's... here's the thing I can completely understand 
if you come to this and you know we live in in a in a we live in a society where we expect that games do have those extra bells and whistles i do get that but i just think the core gameplay is so too it's, fucking it's good, really good. They, but they, I, but they, I don't they, think they, i don't need tons of bells and whistles but it, like but the, the gameplay was it was really good and really similar in the original i think that, that i think that's kind of what was, i mean this is almost a disappointing argument but i just like i was enjoying it but there was something just so not on the next level about it i'm not and i can't i don't i don't want to point to a particular say it should have had this feature or this change to the gameplay or this, but it was just very for a thing after all these years to come out and be called wind jammers 2 for it just to be this i was really really yeah. neutralized it's also, that, it's also just air hockey as well it, it is also just air hockey <laughs> yeah i think it's what that's, that's, that's a knockout air hockey, air hockey like. come on it's, it's, it's cool air hockey. Like, yeah. really cool air hockey but I mean, I don't know how, how anyone else feels. Yeah. I would, For me, I would it's, like this to stay, but I, I'm, I, I'm, I feel I'm, like I'm, I'm following Mark about 80% of the way. I don't go so far as to say it's my game of the year. Oh, it's, it's not my game of the year. Season. It's not my game yeah, yeah. of the year. Okay. I, it, yeah, it sounded like it was fairly high up for you. I was like, oh, I don't know if I go that far. But uh, I think it's 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 better. How by how much better than a ham sandwich? But also, uh, it's, that... like so they they re-released the original right, and then they put out this sequel. And this is like you know a new from the ground up game. And for a you know you know you don't and obviously when you're making a new game, you don't have to deal with any legacy tech or or any remastering. It's like this is new. Windjammer is one super cool, unique, extremely '90s style. A lot of great stuff to work with. And I thought the presentation in Windjammer's two was okay and nothing beyond okay i didn't i didn't see it show up in music and i didn't see it show up in best looking which it which the concept of a windjammer sequel you would think oh this thing is going to blow me away amazing in, soundtrack. In sense, yeah. i did nominate windjammers in best music but okay but it, it would have it would have been killed i think it would have been killed Probably. in that category but that's, that's separate yeah. i mean i i just I, like so much of the other game i was like oh you know these character portraits are okay and the music is you know it's 90s I, I, arcade the vibes, idea you know. the idea that wind jammers 2 is still on here and stray has already been taken off blows my fucking mind because mm. stray is a stray perfectly is nice little game yeah. but gameplay wise it's a pretty yeah. fucking road like, yeah stray i think i think the ham sandwich no i think i think the i think the like the animation work on the cat alone is excellent to the degree it elevates it do you not barry jammers. this podcast idea of ours i just i can't do it <laughs> fine me and jeff will start our own podcast actually <laughs> Um, I, I mean, okay, if it's if it's not staying, it's not staying. But um, uh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, we're back round to me. I have I have one on this list that's like I I think this is. Um, I actually have two on the list. One that's like all the bad things about a ham sandwich and one that's all the good things about a ham sandwich. So I'm just going to lash out at something else instead. Um. I am going to go for Ghostwire Tokyo because I think that actually might veer on being bad. No, you see that I've never had a game that's more of a flat line. It's, like, it, do you know, there, there, there is, is no certain, peaks. There is no, it's just like, there's, it just exists. It just there's, goes. There's a certain element of equilibrium to it where I will listen to that argument where it's a, some really cool ideas, but a fundamentally unpleasant game to play. No, I don't even think it's that. I think it just exists. There is like I've never played a game that is more middle of the road because there's nothing about it that I'm like what I'm doing is awful, but there's also nothing about it that I'm like what I'm doing is good. It's such a strange game to play. It's such a middle of the road ass I, game. I I think it's kind of bad. I, I was really I, slightly, uh, but I think the ham has slightly gone off on this. I think <laughs> I think the thing that put me off buying this, and like I said in the previous categories, I love Evil Within too. I was so excited about this, and and the trailers were super compelling. I think the thing that put me off getting it was the exact thing Garrett's describing, where it's like. I was looking at it going, oh man, it's just another triple A game. It's just another one of those. Like those, all those trailers and all that mystery and all that intrigue. I think in a year where we also where we've talked so much about triple A fatigue, I, I I feel like I would have gone insane if I played this uh, for the exact reasons Garrett's outlining. It just mm. it, I just watched, you know, like like some uh, I watched Giant Bomb's quick look and I watched a few other people look at it and I was like, man, I cannot believe that's what this game is after all this hype and, and such a talented team at the helm and yeah, I don't it know. It looks so much creepier than it ended up being. Like it yeah. looks yeah, it, so much it, it more has artistic. Like, it, it, the best thing it has going for it is vibes, and it has like I don't know, thirty seconds of vibes. Yeah. <laughs> and the other best, the best thing the other has going for it is like it's eight hours long, so it, it is blessedly relatively short. That's the other best argument you could make mm. for this game. It's like, so interesting as well because if you think about like it's probably one of the games that felt like it was 
Um, I don't know if you would say had the most money behind it in terms of marketing, but it felt like it was a very pushed game in the last yeah. couple of years. And yeah, especially because it existed in that weird like uh, Sony uh, Bethesda space where it's just like it's a PlayStation exclusive, but it's not. You know that stuff, which kind the of elevates it at least in conversation. Well. Yeah, yeah, they they did, and you get to the end of 2022, and like no one is talking about this fucking no. thing. No, yeah. but like every time it saw it in like a game awards or like a you know PlayStation showcase or something, I was like. Hmm. This game and part looks of that, like part of that is obviously being down to like the lead developer being shit canned off it and the game essentially being well, yeah. like, all the individuality ripped out of it and just being the most like fucking we're not even going to try to try sort of game. Like yeah, because yeah, this actually it, it was brought up in disappointment, but given like the reaction to this game when it was revealed and that cool moment on stage with the developer and everyone was very happy and saw the game, and then by the time it came out, and there's again that you can't have strong feelings about it. It's impossible to have strong feelings about this game. It just it just exists. I think if this is a ham sandwich I've eaten, I've got that funny taste and gone. I might have just given myself food poisoning. Because I think it's, I think it's slightly too bad for ham sandwich. Personally, I guess by my own logic, I I can't have strong enough feelings to argue against it without then arguing it's bad. Can ah, I, welcome, I'm, welcome I'm to the dilemma myself. we have. Every yeah, yeah, this category. is a tough category. I've trapped myself in my own logic. If if you want to see it go, I'm okay. But okay. God, this game is an emotionless. Just again, it's not even a slog. A exactly. slog would at least mean there's something interesting about it. It's just, it's just an existing thing. Yeah, with, with Ghostwire and Ninja, I don't know what wins this with what's left I, I, you know. I, I think there are, again I, I'll come to it as we're narrowing it down but I think there's like one thing that shows like the all the glory the things we love about the ham sandwich that we talked to Peter about on that Christmas special and then all the kind of ugh, things about the ham sandwich as well in another game um, but yeah we, we go to Garrett next yeah so there's two games that I'm both aware of and played that I think should hang around, and then the other two I haven't played. I think Evil West is too interesting, just based on what I've seen of it. I think it's too interesting. It does too many interesting things. I think it's tra- it has it's a game with ideas, at least, as opposed I, I to think, some other reviews. I think Evil West wins this category. I really do. I think it's mm. it's the first game um I can think of in this category where I think it's the celebration of the seven out of ten, where I look back at the prior years. And we've picked a ham sandwich game because it's 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 had an idea, but it's kind of been disappointing because it didn't fully like realize those ideas or it was just too average a game or whatever. Mm. I think that Evil West is such a celebration of those like bang average 2011 PS3, Xbox 360 action RPG adventure style games that, you know, you play through for the six to eight hours they last and you're like, oh, you know what? You know, do you remember, remember me? Like that sort of thing. Yeah. And it's just like you, you play it, it has a couple of cool ideas and then you you never think about it again. Yeah. I think I, I, Evil West is a perfect I, one of those. I will say, and I don't think I'm the only, the only one here that like I didn't get time to get around to Evil West, yeah. but I will say most of the things you've just said about it being a celebration to the Senate, a seven out of 10. There's one game left on this list that I have played that screams that twice as loud to me. Um, See, if, if, if of the two West games that came out this year, if you, if, if we were talking weird West, I'd probably be with you because I thought I, that was my passion project if it made the cut, but I didn't get around to evil, unfortunately. Yeah. I How was, I, 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 it, strange it, horticulture yeah. then. Uh, I, strange horticulture is That's fine. It's it's kind of got like a death That's by a great f- argument. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a real like death by a thousand cuts because I remember the reason the I passionless thought- it's fine is like the, the most passionate. It's the perfect it's thing like you could say. Everything, everything is a little bit more kind of convoluted than it needs to be. Um, the moments where you could just simplify things are slightly overcomplicated. The moments where you'd like something a bit more are too simplified. Like it, it, it there is that certain equilibrium to it as well. Um, but I think just as like an experience I played through, I, I, I don't see it quite up to level. I think this is, I got the ham sandwich and they forgot to put the ham in. <laughs> okay. I just, the, the, the UI, exp- I feel like this is a game that, um, was made with PC in mind and then had to, you know, figure out the controls afterwards. Cause I feel like I played this on switch and like UI wise, this game is, I found incredibly frustrating yeah. just to play. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think, I think with a service, I think with a service with a UI, it lands either right at the top of this list or slightly beyond it. But even then I find so, most of the puzzles in the game were, I, I, you know, in some ways it just, 
it becomes like an orienteering experience and that isn't a particularly enjoyable yeah. sort of thing in general anyway um and that's the like first, as, uh, that's the first mention of orienteering on game of the year ever i think <laughs> we got there um like as as a story nothing really grabs you none of the characters really grab you and it clearly it feels like a game that is trying to have this kind of uh gothic detective vibe to it where you're trying to kind of understand what's going on with certain characters but none of them are particularly memorable none of the story is particularly memorable um it has frustrations in that because like one of the, the big things about the game is that you know um your customers come in and they're, they're after a particular plant and they might give you like a small description of it and you've got a bunch of plants and you have to figure out which one it is that they want and over time your the list that the, you know the, the the amount of plants that you have grows and they come in all shapes and sizes and the the clues and the bits of information you get to figure out which plants you're after you know that repertoire grows one of the biggest issues and i think there is a way to do it early on but the game never tells you is that once you've established what a plant is you can put like a tag on it to remind you that you can just click and say oh that's what that plant is and there is a way to do it but the game doesn't explicitly tell you or i just missed it but i think it is the the former the game doesn't tell you until you're like two-thirds of the way through already so by that point you do have plants that you need to use again but obviously by that point you've got like 50 60 plants and you don't remember what the name of them, any of them are so like the game tells you way too late how to fucking tag the fucking things and that was the thing that frustrated me more than anything else it, it is a contender for this category i do think so but it's on the 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 other side it's the coffee talk side of the seven out of ten mm. that's compared this to like based on everything you said it sounds like you don't like the game yeah, yeah i didn't mind the game i didn't that, mind it i think it that, had that, cool that, that was ideas, like a more negative review rather than like yeah. it feels like on the surface it had ideas but actually playing the game was bad mm. yeah I, I i think this goes yeah, because I, like I'm with Dave, and I, I think I know what two he's talking about. There's like a a good ham sandwich here and a bad one, and that that feel like the final two. But mm-hmm. oh, God. we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have an argument about which one is which. I can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> there's a game here that's designed very much to be a ham sandwich deliberately. Mm-hmm. Yes, so. yes, yes. And, and somebody on this call is fizzing with excitement to get to it. <laughs> um, who that is? Who is who is that that just cut that? That's me. So it's Barry next. That's so Barry. Um, Barry, you're you're making the last cut here. Okay, so we're down to Horizon Two, Power Wash, and Evil West. I feel like the winds are blowing in the direction of Horizon winning this category, but mm. I am, as someone who's vehemently did by it and frustrated with it in a lot of ways, I still feel like it was better than a ham sandwich. Um, like because the, the funny thing is, I think this, I think this category, I think one of the most perfect winners of this game. Uh, of this category was Far Cry 5, right? Because, you know, you put a triple A AAA sequel in there that's just map, clutter, fucking perfectly fine checklist podcast game. And Horizon Forbidden West is that in a lot of ways, but I still think there is more um, polish and grandeur and um, uh, spectacle and beautiful art design, and I still think it wasn't in the category, but I still think that it had phenomenal music. I think the I think the sound of that franchise is great across the two games. I think there is, and uh, admittedly, a lot of the stuff about the sequel that that makes it better than Ham's Energy is kind of like legacy stuff. It's kind of just like Horizon's a cool world to be in. I I think Horizon by the skin of its teeth. I think it's a it's a worthy top three finisher, but I think it's better than Ham Sandwich, and I I I would opt to take it out uh, on those bases. Um, it's also got Angela Bassett in it. She's pretty good. Um, yes. she's a good actress. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if because like uh, maybe I'm wrong. I felt like people are maybe thinking this wins. Uh, uh, no. Nope. But it got, uh, it got too weird at the end as well for like when I, I read through the story of this game mm. i was like that is way too weird to win ham sandwich yeah like, i i didn't finish it but it it, it it went off the reservation in a kind of interesting way from what i've heard and what i've seen so far i've started to see some of that stuff um yeah yeah i got the, i got the 10 hours and yeah there, there's that bit where they introduce like different tribes that have like magic future technology and i was like yeah Ooh, interesting. Oh, it gets even it gets even better than that they go yeah. that that game there's certainly if there was a twist of the year uh, i think that i think that might be up there it's it's, um, it's something is is it anybody's number one no 
Okay. Uh, so does that does that mean it wins? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. The, the endless paradox of this of this yeah. category is your your lethargy about it may also make it win. But uh, I feel like we can we can cut it. Uh, okay. Please please try more for please try harder for for, for, uh, for um, Horizon Three. Please. We got, we got <laughs> nonetheless. We got a one v one here of Power Wash Simulator and Evil West, and I think Power Wash Simulator is the perfect intentional ham sandwich game. Yep. It does no more or less than what it says on the tin. It will not change well i think it might have changed jack's life but it uh, uh, on the whole it won't change your life uh, there's nothing like too severe you're not getting twisted a year at a fucking power wash simulator i'll tell you that <laughs> i'll tell you wait, when you gotta clean that uh, that mars rover woo. but it's like it reminds me of kind of like um even though i think it was better than a ham sandwich it reminds me of like wilmot's warehouse and stuff like that where the game is exclusively done for a little small releases of endorphins when you take off tasks you listen to a podcast you're just trying to relax you're not looking for a game-changing experience you just want to switch your brain off for 20 25 minutes or something like that i thought horizon forbidden west was the one that kind of like reaches for further but falls lower than a ham sandwich for me um so it's all the ways in which i uh, ham sandwich is a disappointing award whereas i think power wash simulator is a celebration mm. of the genre of the ham sandwich yeah there's, there's it always a... becomes a positive award here yeah yes it, yeah, yeah. that's what i like about this award it is a weird kind of other thing like i i i got a couple of hours of fun out of destruction all-stars even though now there's a fucking game nobody's talked about in a uh, year yeah. and a half but you know it's um uh you know th- it, this can be a mildly positive award in a round. I, 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 you know, yeah, it's, it can definitely be that. Um, I, I'll be the low man and say this, I didn't find this one at all. <laughs> Outside for, for, of the initial appeal, I found it fidgety. I found the controls unsatisfying. And, uh, did you find the constant stream control? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Which, which, which was, which was a, 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 but that was the other thing as well. It was kind of like, uh, you know, you can just kind of turn on the ability to just always be shooting. I'm like, Rule for me, anytime there's a mechanic or a setting in the game that's kind that's something akin to more or less play it for me. I'm like, okay. I mean, um yeah, that, but it's not though, is it? Because you got it's not it's not that I'm being I'm being a little bit facetious, but I yeah, I, I was just kind of like I, I will be I will be I will be a real Philistine and a grump, and I will just say it's just like fidgeting with nozzles and cleaning shite out of a dray. I'm like, what are we doing? I just like because like I only I sick thing of I the one I like the best was the bike. Because I think I got the kind of cathartic feel out of cleaning the the, the dirt bike, but it, at, at a certain point it was just like this one to clean. It, well, I kind of yeah, but also it has the charm of getting into the crevices and stuff like that. I think the bigger and wider and and more vertical the levels got, I was like, oh, like the movement isn't that satisfying, and I'm just I it, it, that it just kind of went over my head, and I, I I didn't get that kind of cathartic podcast game feel out of it because I feel like on a core level the movement and the shooting didn't. Sh- shooting quote unquote i, I, I didn't I, do it for me i did get the catharsis but almost perfectly for this category the catharsis uh didn't last long i stopped playing it and i haven't really thought about it since which is again almost perfect again kind category. of kind of it's, sums it up you yeah know. um so completed it mate i, 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 I just, think as well by the way when you were saying about podcast game when i was playing this game is the clearest my podcast app has ever been because <laughs> I, I could just put this on and just listen to podcasts and it's just so there's something really calming and hypnotic about it that it is it's it's satisfying enough without venturing into exciting at any stage and it has repeated like Dave says just little hits of endorphins into your mm-hmm. brain it's like you know a, a a kind of warm hug of of an experience for me but just for my brain um and it allowed me weirdly I mean, this might be too deep for this podcast, but I did a lot of thinking while I was playing Power Wash Simulator. It kind of freed up a lot of space in my brain. And when I played it, there were some things that I really needed, really needed to sort of figure out and consider where I was at that point in the year with, with a certain situation I had going on in my life. Yeah. And it genuinely helped me achieve that clarity yeah. by not being invasive enough mm. that I had to really focus on what right. I was doing. Yeah. And it just, it, it, I'm the sort of person that it's, it, I don't have like ADHD or anything, but I do find it easier to concentrate on something if I'm doing two things at the same time. 
which is like maybe like a really strange version of it mm. but like if i'm listening to something and and like i've been listening to you guys and then i can like focus on other things at the same time and if stuff hit, goes into my brain that much better because sometimes i'll just look at the screen and i'm like oh it's garrett i barely ever see garrett and then i get excited that i can see garrett and then i'm distracted and i've completely forgotten everything he said and then i'm just shouting xenoblade chronicles because i assume that's what he was talking about but this game is that it just distanced me enough out of my own head um to to be able to figure things out listen to podcasts just chill it's never gonna go beyond seven out of ten but it never goes underneath seven out of ten for me it is the ultimate flat line experience from start to finish uh yeah and i don't want to fuck around with soap or you know any of that stuff i just like the different nozzles that you can unlock the different distances the most satisfying to, thing to clean in the game was the rusty old helter skelter i loved it i spent an hour doing it and i did i waste my time or did i enjoy it i can't decide which of those two things it is there therefore the sandwich is ham it's plain <laughs> bread it's plain ham there's no mustard there's no pickle I'm just gonna pick it up and, eat it, and i'm gonna ponder my life and my choices um, if Evil West had come out in 2011, we would have spoken about it on our Christmas special with Peter Willington. It's it's so like I, that type of game. I I think it's time for a vote, my friends. Um, I'm going to go Power Wash Simulator, Garrett. Power Wash Simulator all day every day. All right. Um, oh, I don't know. It's actually really tough because I think. I think Jack's case is quite compelling, but I, I, I I'll be Scrooge, and I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll, th- I'll throw a vote to, to Evil West because I, 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 I get where Mark's coming from, but I, I, I you know, I'll, I'll, I'll show solidarity. Apologies for stabbing you in the back about Signalis. <laughs> They're back I, together I still, again. I, I cannot believe when, I, when that category came together, I was like, I, oh, I'm gonna have a real tough time getting Signalis past Mark and Neon White past it. And I didn't even have to do any of my own dirty work. You yeah, all took crazy. them out for me. It's crazy. Fantastic. Meant, the politics. We need to screw the, Garrett over at some point. The <laughs> bullshit yeah, of the wait, politics wait. behind that curtain. Let me tell you. Um, yeah. Jack, your vote. Yeah, I mean, oh, come on now. It's power mm. simulator. And it's academic, but Mark, I mean, it actually is Evil West, but yeah, whatever. Um, the winner of the Ham Sandwich Award, or the Peter Willington Memorial, it's like a Ham Sandwich or Keen Award for OKS video game, goes to Power Wash Simulator. Ding! And now it's time to go to the <laughs> poll, well. and this would be the perfect category for no one actually voted in it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. what one have we got here? Power Wash Simulator from me. Mm. I don't know like how Google Forms has this new thing where it constantly refreshes when you tab back to it. It, it delays things. Uh, to an unfortunate level. Uh, but here we are. Okay, so we have got a fucking decisive winner in this category. Um, in third place, with 9.8% of the vote, we have Evil West. Okay. Tied for second on 12.2%, we have Power Wash Simulator and Pokemon Legends. So if we had gone to Deadlock, we still would have ended up with the same winner. I'm thinking horizon. I am a little bit disappointed at the people with the Pokemon there. <laughs> and with 43.9% of the horizon. vote, Stray. Oh, wow. wow. I'm all, wow. Listen, I was the one who took it out, but I'm almost a little bit pleased. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting one. Interesting one. I bet yeah. it's good to it's good to hear that I think that even though we've said it slightly above that, it's good to hear that everybody else kind of feels the same way about Stray. It's a nice game. little game, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, it just, it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. God, maybe Stray should have won. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> 